Hello there, my name is Blake, and today I'm going to show you how to create a bottle recycling machine so you can start turning plastic bottles into 3D printer filament, which is awesome. I've been working on this machine for about three months now, and I discovered a unique way to make these things cheaper than a lot of the other machines out there, so I hope this is useful to you in some way. First things first, you're going to need about 10 different parts, along with a nice assortment of screws. I'll leave a link to where you can get all of these parts, along with the STL, so you can follow along. If you find this tutorial useful, consider supporting me on Patreon. So the first step is to use the STLs and... 3d print all of the 3d printable parts the full build requires a modest amount of about 200 grams of filament we're going to start by assembling the bottle cutter and it's important that this thing is assembled correctly because if you don't cut the bottles correctly it just makes it extremely difficult to pull strewed correctly the m5 screws can be inserted through the bottom and then you can thread on a nut and you want to make sure that these things are extremely tight and secure so use a wrench to tighten these all the way only start with one post and then thread another nut on there we're going to use this post to sharpen both of the bearings so add a bearing and a locking washer followed by another nut and tighten that up next you can take a clamp or a vise and clamp that thing down make sure it's secure now the next step is extremely important you want to get the edges of these bearings as sharp as you can so i use the sander to sand the edges you could also potentially use any other type of sander start coarse and then go finer and finer however you can do it just make sure the edges are sharp now you can seat this m5 washer into the cutting guide now you can secure the cover in place with m3 times 10 millimeter screws on both sides so now it should look like this add the second post in the same way that you added the first post pay attention to the notches in the center of the cutting guide those notches represent a cutting height of 7.75 millimeters so you want to align the bearings so they are even with those notches so the top of the bottom bearing should be in line parallel with the top of those notches so that will ensure that the cordage that you make is 7.75 millimeter to about 8 millimeters which is super important because if your cordage is too wide like eight and a half or nine millimeters there will be too much plastic going through the pull extruder which will make it impossible to pull strewed plastic through the machine here you can see the top of the bearing is aligned with the top of the notch and make sure everything is super tight and secure now you can add the second bearing and secure it on top of the bottom bearing when you move the bottom bearing it should also move the top bearing with like medium pressure again if you're having trouble the sharper these bearings are the easier this is so that's about it for the bottle cutter now we're gonna move on to the rest of the build this part of the build requires soldering and you're also dealing with AC power so this is where I'm gonna put a disclaimer I'm not responsible for anything that goes wrong I'm just documenting how I built my machine so if you're not comfortable or know what you're doing and you try this and you fuck something up that's on you obviously but yeah pay attention be safe let's get into it first step is to line up the end of the power cord with the length of wire that's available on the heating element you're gonna cut into this wire at that length and expose the copper should look something like this we're going to be soldering the heating element onto this exposed copper right here before soldering on the heating element you need to add this heat shrink we're going to use this later to insulate the wires do not skip this step these wires need to be insulated properly because ac 110 is going through here so you do not want these exposed at all now you can solder the heating element leads onto the exposed copper section the polarity does not matter because this is a ptc heating element it's basically just a big resistor that is designed to reach a certain temperature and then stop heating up so the polarity just does not matter on this now you can feed the heat shrink back over the wires make sure everything is completely covered make sure there's no solder poking through that it's important that this is insulated properly now you can use the heat gun to shrink everything up and then for redundancy i'm going to tape these up one more time just to make sure everything is as safe as it possibly can be make sure these wires are covered god damn it so now you're going to connect the end of the cord to the ac side of the ac to dc converter again use the heat shrink make sure everything's covered up everything is labeled on the top of the unit the polarity of the ac side does not matter but the polarity of the dc side does matter next you'll connect the positive and negative terminals of the dc converter to the motor controller connect positive to positive negative to negative if you get that wrong you'll fry the motor controller this is what everything should look like if you did everything correctly notice i added a couple more wires on the motor controller but yeah pretty simple so next we're going to attach the heater block to the heating element one quick thing on safety since this heating element is connected directly to ac 110 you should just be cautious test to see if the heating element is working properly before you clamp it in your vice and wear some protective gloves because if there's some sort of manufacturer defect 
fact, I've looked online and I've never seen an example of that happening. You don't want to accidentally connect your vice to AC 110. In general, these heating elements are used in like a ton of products. Like they're used in hair dryers, hot glue guns. They use them in Teslas. So this type of thing did not bother me personally. But yeah, anyway, be safe. Don't attempt this if you don't know what you're doing. It's not my fault. I gave you my two cents. And I'm actually a dumbass. Now, when you're attaching the heater block, you want to make sure that the embedded side of the heater block is facing the opposite direction as the wires. Don't forget to check this. Because if you glue it in the wrong orientation, you're going to have to redo it. Threaded part facing opposite of the wires. Now you can add the thermal paste to the heater block. You want to get a nice coating on there, like a nice layer, but also not too much. Just like a medium amount. This is how much I added and that's how it looks. And now you can squish it on there. The heating element should not be plugged in at this point. And you're just gonna apply a little bit of pressure. Kind of spread it out all across there. What you're going for is a nice suction effect. Don't press too hard. You just wanna make sure there's a nice suction effect on there. Make sure there's a nice even layer of thermal plate paste across there. You'll feel it kind of like sucking to the to the heating element. Now you can plug it in and turn it on. Notice how I have it clamped on the edge. If you don't clamp it like that, the heating element won't heat up fully. The vice will dissipate a lot of the heat. Leave it for about 10 minutes. You'll know it's done when you can tap it and it doesn't move. Now you can drill out the nozzle with the 1.75 millimeter drill bit. Start with like light pressure. This part is pretty easy and straightforward. Make sure it's 1.75 millimeters by testing it with a piece of filament. Now after the heater block and heating element have cooled down, you can attach the nozzle. Now you can start the assembly process and mounting everything. Start by I'm mounting the motor controller like this. Four of the M3 times 10 millimeter screws. Don't over tighten these. Should sit nice and pretty like that. Now you can add the motor and secure it in place with the four M3 times 10 millimeter screws on the other side. Now you can attach the wires from the motor controller to the motor and then route everything. Then attach the protective cover with the two M3 times 10 millimeter screws on the top. Everything should be nice and tidy at this point. Now you can attach the L bracket to the base. Use the M3 times 40 millimeter screw along with nuts, wires, washers and lock washers. You might have to mess around with, with this for a bit. Attach the screw to the threaded part of the heater block. Tighten everything up as tight as you can. Use a small wrench and pliers to make sure everything is tight. Now you can add the drive gear to the shaft. You want this fit to be tight, you might need to use a hammer to get it on there. The fit is supposed to be tight. Now you can use this M3 times 16 millimeter screw with a washer and lock washer. Make sure there's a lock washer on here. This thing needs to be super tight. Screw it in nice and solid. Now you can take these M3 times 20 millimeter screws. Use these along with the 3D printed part to assemble the main spool on both sides. Should be pretty easy and straightforward. Now you can attach the main spool to the spool holder. The spool holder is a compliant mechanism, so you can release it with the lever to unload the spool. At this point, the build should be complete and you can turn it on to make sure everything is working. Yeah, so that is how you assemble the Pulse Streeter M1. If you like this video, please share it, like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for my next video, which I will be doing a tips and tricks video on the whole process of pulse extrusion, including settings for printing pulse plastic. Stay tuned for that.